let me introduce a man whose um, acolyte might confuse you a bit. It's not common that sometimes you see me with notes on the captain's arena, but I'm doing that because then I don't want to mess it up. Talking to some of you that were going to host him, and you are also a bit confused, so I don't want to start confusing you today, so let's just make it clear from the get-go. And I want to do it like this. He is currently the chief executive officer and lead consultant, and remember that, lead consultant at Hisa Africa Limited Insurance Agency. Good. Put it on the side. Is also a key intermediary, Absalive uh, Assurance Company, and the Old Mutual Company. Also, remember the Old Mutual Company is going to be a very integral point in his career journey. Good. Now put that to the side. Before I introduce the name, then let me tell you why I consider him a captain of an industry. Every time. I'm talking to a CEO of insurance, then I do know that that's a man who's quite passionate about education. I mean, you do know very well that we've not broken into the double digit figures. Our economy keeps on growing, but then insurance sector by itself is not replicating what the economy is saying. So you have to know then that that's a man who the first thing that he has to do before he says, I'm doing good business, it's got to be about education. And that's why right now, if you just go and ask him, there's a particular line that is essentially good in terms of also introducing him or essentially knowing what he's about. He talks about impacting the life or the financial life of individuals one after another. So when he talks about that particular area, he's got to talk to you in person, then move to the next one. That's how you know that he's quite passionate then about what he's doing. What am I talking about? On the captain's arena, let me take this time to introduce you to a fresh episode. We do this every Tuesday from 8 to 9 p.m. On this particular episode, we are joined by one, Alfred Mado. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simba. I'm well. How, how are you doing Fantastic. this morning? Fantastic. I can complain. Very good. Let, let's, let's start by running away from the confusion that majority of people are reading into your CV. That you used to work for Old Mutual. Essentially, we're not clear whether you left or didn't leave. <laughs> but then currently also, you are a lead consultant for them. And you're also a lead consultant for APSA Assurance. Can you make it clear? Well, good question. Uh, Simba, <laughs> I joined Old Mutual yes. way back in 1998 when I was fresh from campus. And Old Mutual gave me a platform and an opportunity to grow my sales career. Yes. I've progressed uh, in that path uh, from a junior salesperson all the way to senior management level, uh, latest being the general manager, the old mutual little uh, rife business in East Africa. No, that was until uh, 2018. You know, as you progress in this path, on this path, uh, there are many opportunities that come your way. You may want to embrace the same and grow your, your footprint. And what I decided to do is to jump out of management, to manage myself, be able to interact directly with the clients, mm -hmm because I felt I had done enough in terms of managing others, in terms of coaching others. It was now time for me to build myself, and especially in readiness for retirement. Now, as a financial consultant, the role of this land allows that you can serve more than one country. I mean, one, more than one uh, company. And that is the reason why I d diversified, uh, you know, my, 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 my network into the APSA life. Yes. I currently serve both the old mutual and the APSA life, I consult for the two and I do business with them and they have taken me as a lead consultant. Let me tell you what, during the time that I was working as an agent, I grew through all the ranks and was a top agent in the Aki Agent of the Year Award. And if I could use an example of doctors who you know, say likes of Dr. Gekonyo, 
the chairman of current hospital. No, Today, in as much as he runs his own practice, he consults for other hospitals. You may hear that he has some line of consultancy in Aga Khan Hospital. He's got a line of consultancy in, uh, in uh, Mpisha Hospital. He's got a line of consultancy, maybe the cardiology area for Nairobi Hospital. That is exactly what I'm doing. That I've now progressed to that other level of consultancy and I'm doing, now I'm no longer just the agent. You know, the problem with being an agent is that in a lot of instances, you are very restricted. You can never think beyond the box. You can never think beyond the company that you serve. But now as a financial consultant, when I sit, listen to client's need, listen to what the client is looking for, I may be able to offer a solution that exists in the old mutual basket or in the absa basket. And you know what? It's a, turned out to be a blessing. Because a lot of clients that, I, that thought that I'm not an advisor, they were seeing me as an agent. Currently, they see me uh, beyond just being an agent. Right. I'm a consultant. I give you advice that I think works for you. I will no longer restrict you. You know, previously, there are clients that will come my way. I lo listen to their, 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 their financial requirements. But what is available in our old mutual basket was not going to address that situation. So I kept pushing them into our mutual. All right. Let me just take you back a little bit to that particular question of the fact that you were retained essentially even when you said well it's been a good time guys working with you now I feel like I, ex I can expand now my 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 area into being an advisor these two companies looked at you and then they said don't let him go because we do know how much of experience he's got. Just tell him, whatever it is that you do, you can still come and still consult for us. Is that, is that what you're trying to say? No, what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, when you make a decision yeah. to uh, progress to the next level up, yeah. <clears throat> it comes with various responsibilities. I realized that I had done enough in terms of uh, uh, coaching uh, sales teams. I felt I had done enough in mentorship of the sales teams. I felt I had done enough in management of the sales guys. Yes. I had a whole team of about 400 guys reporting to me through the regional managers, uh, then below them the sales managers and ultimately the uh, financial advisors. Mm -hmm. I still mentor them up to this day. I still coach them up to this day. But besides that, I am now running my own practice in the name of Visa Africa Insurance Agency which is a key intermediary of both the old mutual and the APSA. Let me talk about old mutual a bit. Yes. Just to be able to show you the confidence uh, uh, and relationship that I grew with them over the years. When I when left management... Years, it was 24 years, isn't 24 it? 24 years. When I left management, yeah, yeah, yeah. we started off another conversation towards building a franchise in the name of East Africa Insurance Agency. I am proud to say that this has now come to complete fruition in the, you know, in the month of uh, June. Yes. Signed off. Now I'm a, a franchise uh, principal of Hisa Africa, which is a franchise entity for the old mutual group. Yes, then the Absa Life, on the other hand, have given me what you call the distribution agreement. That I'm selling for this, and I'm also selling for this organization. Absa pays me based on the work I've done with them. Yes. Old mutual pays me based on the work I've done with them. And besides that, they also come up with their own independent retention benefits mm -hmm. for me, Ada Hisa Africa. Awesome. You'll hear that Alfred has actually been given an incentive tour. Like I went to one to UK last year. I have over the years recruited a few guys to work with me, especially to support me in um, giving my client best service, mm -hmm. you know, the after sale service. I've got a team of six ladies that are working with me. These ladies are not doing any selling. They are only helping me to manage and serve the customers that I've brought on both, both in the old mutual space and the APSA life space. They wake up in the morning with only one responsibility, to ensure that my customers are happy. How do they do this? They have the direct contact in the old mutual and direct contact in uh, the APSA group. Yeah. So when an, an APSA clan that I've brought on board has an issue that needs attention, there is a person that has been assigned to deal with that particular issue okay. in respect to the client and be able to address it with the APSA team and where my attention is needed, I come in. Okay. If a client comes in with an issue and the client is from the old mutual side, again, what happens is that there's a person within my HISA team that is assigned to deal with that kind of an issue directly with the old mutual and of course put me in the picture. 
So what I'm trying to say here, in other words, Simba, is that I ceased to be the agent and I became the consultant, I became the advisor. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer selling for my benefit and only. I have to literally go through it looking at how relevant is my advice to the client. Is it going to be of value to that client in the future? Awesome. I don't just want to be there and make my money and go away. I want my clients to also make money. There are products of old mutual that are very, very strong. Yes. That, if I was asked, they perhaps are the strongest in the country. At the same time, Absa Life has got another set of products that are equally strong. And I would say, most likely the most competitive product in the country. Mm -hmm. So because, of, because these two are multinationals, they are international organizations and they are very customer centric, what I've done is that I've taken a position where I decide after sitting with a client, looking at the client's needs, looking at the client, what the client wants, what the client's uh, uh, risk, uh, risk uh, appetite, I'll be able to push them into products of either of these two organizations. You know this morning when I was at the car park, I received an interesting message from a lady that works for Jubri. And she's telling me that she's, she's actually been looking f you know, uh, at my CV and feels that we should try, strike some uh, relationship that I work with Jubri as well. Yes. At the moment, I would say no. Why, why not? My customers are completely sorted in terms of the yes. financial solutions that they're yes. looking for yes. in the old Mucho and APSA. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything that will actually make me to want to go beyond these two organizations mm -hmm. to try and you know, uh, register a new relationship with, with, with an underwriter. Mm -hmm. For now, I'm satisfied. My customers are, are happy. Maybe unless the needs of the market change, yes. that be, maybe will be the time that I may consider other underwriters. But for now, Absa life and old mutual life are just good enough to sort the needs of my clients. Pretty much. Yes. Now, Alfred, let me just take you back a little uh -huh. bit. And there's one thing that came out of your CV. I mm. mean, you, you count yourself lucky maybe because of the period. Yes. You just graduated and boom, you're already at old mutual. <laughs> so hold on. Could you take us back? Is there something in your family, you will say, that sort of prepared you for what you are today? That if you look back, you will say, if I go back, I will tell you, yes, I was destined to be here. Is your family an enterprising fam family? You wow. So <laughs> believe it or not, you know, by the time I was going for my graduation, which was about six months after I, you know, I got the, the, my job with All Mucho as a yeah. sales agent, yeah. I'd even bought a car. <laughs> I went for my graduation driving my own car. <laughs> I worked for six months as a Alfred, sales agent. You're one of those lucky guys. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for Dubucho for six months yeah, yeah. as a very, very junior financial advisor. As a... God opened the market for me. Yeah. Then the very first month after training, and I remember we were a class of about 37 uh, people that were recruited to be yeah. sales financial advisors. Yeah. When uh, we finished the training and we went to the market, got to the market, I, the market suddenly opened in a very divine way. I thank God. And uh, soon after, I started bringing in sales. By the sixth month, which was now the time that I was supposed to go for my graduation at Moy University, I had already bought my first car, which I bought somewhere in Rangata, 235,000 shillings <laughs> from a certain lady. I wouldn't remember her name. A, I sincerely thank God. Do, do you remember the car? I remember it was a KD 501E, yeah. 551E. Yeah. It was a Toyota Carina. Ah, I okay. bought it for 235,000 yeah. shillings. Yeah. Let me tell you what, that became the turning point my level of passion towards helping people do financial planning mm -hmm. started there. And I've never looked back. I'll tell you what, I joined the old mutual team then. Mm -hmm. We were a class of 37, yeah. but we joined a team that had about 21 uh, you know, advisors that were already working with the old mutual. Yeah. Many, many of the people that I joined with left. I think currently, I'm, I could be the only one that is still in the industry. All the others have left and joined other different professions. That's what I wanted to know. Something yeah. about you. Yes. That will make you do, it will make you grow that fast. I mean, yes. when you look at your CV, yes. somebody would question it. Mm. This guy says he graduated in 1998 mm. and in 1998 it was at Old Mutual. Mm. Now, thank, thank you for making that clear. Yes. Something about you that makes you stand out, especially when it comes to the way that you deal with people. Is that what made you essentially people trust you to the point that after six months, you, you're bringing in sales. Some people will struggle for even one or two years before they make a, before they make a sell. Let me tell you something. There's a lot that people tell me about my own personality. Yeah. I wouldn't talk about myself, but what I hear people telling me, telling, uh, me about my personality, one, I'm a very friendly person. Uh -huh. Very, very transparent. Me, I don't know of gray areas. I know how to put it as is. Secondly, I'm very, very committed to what I do. 
Is that, is that because of the way that you're brought up? The way I'm brought up. You know, as I said, I'm a firstborn in a family. and oh, I and firstborn. Yeah, firstborn. <laughs> Less possibilities yeah. were many. In fact, even when I was in the university, coming home, you'd see my brothers expecting that I would support them in this or that area, not remembering that I was not I'm in the university working. <laughs> I was actually studying. <laughs> the study. responsibilities were way beyond me. So it. that alone became a motivator to me. Yeah. That my parents were looking up to me. We didn't have many graduates in the area where I come from. Maybe I was one of the very few that, that existed at that particular time. And the expectations by the society, as well as my family, pushed me to become very, very committed, very dedicated about what I do. Um, at Good Time Manager, you learn that for this particular interview, I was here right on time. By the way, I that, never miss it. That's a true, that's a yes, true thing. I, you never, in, I saw you I saw yes, your record the parking. I never take chances. Yeah, yeah. When I have a clan's meeting, I will stop everything else to ensure that I keep time. No, then, besides that, of course, it is good to be able to put yourself in the clan's shoe. That when you make recommendation, you need to be godly. Give people advice that will help them improve their lives. If 10, 15 years down the, down the line, I'm not helping you improve, I'm not making your financial life better, mm. then I have no purpose, I have no call in your life. Mm. I have embraced this as a call that God gave me and accepted it. And I will tell you what, my joy every single day is to see the level of transformation that many people that I've touched have gone through. People that were financially disorganized have actually shaped up and today they are investing for their children for education purposes. They're investing for their own retirement. They have taken medical insurance. They are taking retirement investment. I feel so happy about it. That has, I am no longer looking at money. That is not my key driver. Your gratification is seeing yes. people change their lives. Yes. I am no longer looking at money. money like There's no money that Odmucho has not paid me. Yeah. I will tell you the truth. There's no money Odmucho has not, has not paid me. I tell people that way back in the year 2000, I was earning more than 200,000. In the year 2000. Could be an equivalent uh, of... That's what I mean. Could be an equivalent of... 2000, 2005 000 and above, yeah, no. I was already earning more than a million bob. <laughs> so let me tell you the truth. Yeah. It's not about money. Yeah. The moment you touch the lives of people, okay. they'll be talking about you out there. The moment I make other people mm -hmm. to be my, like, like myself people, they become like my brand uh, ambassadors. That wherever they go, they ask their friends, guys, have you had a chance to meet the financial doctor, Alfred Masson? That alone sells me. I've got so much on my plate. Mm -hmm. The people that I meet every day, my dad is, my dad is ever packed. I have no time to waste. And these are not people that I'm looking for. These are people that are being referred to me by my happy old customers. That I had a chance to meet with you, met maybe with your wife, met with your colleagues, met with your siblings, and the little knowledge that I impacted in you makes you to feel that even your friends out there should benefit from the same. So there are a lot of people that are being referred to me, sent my way, so that I can help them also through that financial transformation. Yes, so that is me. Mm. Okay, that is in order. You've taken me back to the yes. gate now. We can understand the man we're talking about today here. Yes. Yes. At Old Mitchell. Yes. I mean, yeah, you've just graduated here, you are. It's 1998. Mm. Fresh from the university, but mm -hmm. actually still within the university. Mm -hmm. And now you say, well, let me start this journey. It's been 24 years down the line. Just before I even looked up and said, well, now I can actually consider myself to act independently within this particular space. What is your key takeaway, Alfred, within those 24 years? If you look back, what would you say that this is the most important takeaway from my 24 years ago? Let me tell you something. I don't want to forget this because it's a very, very important part of my professional journey. Yes. There is this gentleman who was our CEO at the point that I joined Old Mutual. Yes. A respected man called Stuart Anderson, who was our group CEO. Yes. I do not know, I have no clue why from the onset that gentleman liked me. I have no idea. Completely. But Right from the beginning, coming from an extremely humble background, the guy suddenly liked me. And he became my mentor, he became my coach. He walked this journey with me literally, at personal level. That you believe it or not, year 2000, I was already signing up papers for my first mortgage. 102 years into employment. I signed up my first mortgage in the year 2000. And when I signed up the mortgage, the guy told me, you know what, Alfred? <coughs> I want you to own a house. 
and I'll work with you the journey to ensure that a 10-year mortgage will be cleared before the 10th year. Here is a mortgage that we're signing up with you for 2.7 million shillings. The repayment came to about some 37 or so thousand shillings per month. Yes. And the guy told me, Alfred, what you do every month when commissions are paid, I'll want you to walk in here with your commission statement. I will help you to decide how much to allocate to the mortgage. Yes, the standing, uh, uh, the standing amount is 37, but in months that you are uh, you're earning more, I'd like us to push more into repaying that mortgage. Exactly. Exactly. Believe it or not, two years down the line, I was done the first mortgage. But the guy never gave me a break. When I was paying my last installment, exactly. he called me. Alfred, you've done well, but I don't want you to start celebrating. You've bought the first house, but what stops you from buying the second? I want you now to bring me papers for the next. Go look for a house. The company is willing to help you. The company is willing to give you the, 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 the support that you need. Mm -hmm. Start the second mortgage. So in the year 2002, around May, I signed up papers for my second mortgage. That went through for 18 months. I was done with it. Because every time you earn, I do not spend before sitting with my boss to look at how much do I put into my various expenses and how much is remaining for me to push into the mortgage. So for you, it, and became, it became discipline within the discipline. property. Discipline. That's you, what you're telling people, isn't it? Stuart Henderson was like an armed forces guy. Discipline from yeah. time management, discipline from managing diary, discipline from managing your expenses. That is the guy that worked with me. And is the man that I give the most credit in my life in terms of my professional growth, yeah. other than God, of course, who has made me to be who I am today. Nazar. But Stuart Henderson, I still give him all the credit. You hear this, that in the year 2002, July, I was signing up that mortgage. And now you know what? The first mortgage of the first house that I bought, we put in a tenant and became part of the income that I was making to help me pay the second. When I bought the, the second, I mean the, the second, it became part of the income that was going into that. Let me tell you what, my brother, I did that and by the year 2005, yeah. beginning of 2005, I was completely done with three mortgages. Then one day I remember we were having an incentive breakfast uh, meeting at Panafric Hotel. Yeah. And he was giving incentives and awards to the top advisors in the company. And I was actually the top then. <laughs> you know what he said? That I'm so impressed of my first, uh, my top agent, Alfred Matthew, who up to this day lives in the slums. <laughs> you know where the slums were? <laughs> Donholm. <laughs> I had bought three houses in Donholm. <laughs> the guy said, in front of everyone, yeah. that my top agent yeah. lives in the slums, in the slum. and the slums are in Donholm. <laughs> he has bought three houses, but in the slums. But in the slums. My friend, that was the turning point. <laughs> After that meeting, I went and asked him, ah. Mr. Henderson, what would you like me to do to get out of the slums? Ah. He told me, Alfred, I'm walking with you. We'll yeah. look for a house in the upper market. And the guy pushed me within no time yeah. to buying a house in Rorecho in 2007 at a cost of 25 million. 2007. Yeah. My monthly repayment was at 300. Yeah. It was not a small pay payment. But what am I trying to say in short? I am trying to say that for you to succeed, you need to be held hand by somebody. Azen. Azen. There's somebody that has done it before, yeah. has experienced, Azen. has become an expert. Mm. If they hold your hand, they will work with you to success. Azen. Stuart Henderson moved me from those levels to the level that I find myself today. That from 2007, 2008, even as we're going for the international conventions as a top advisor, appearing the Aki Agent of the Year Award as a top agent, there's a lot that happened in my, in, in, on my path. Yeah. You know, as all these things were happening, you're becoming more and more credible and visible in the market. You now become a brand. People already know there's a guy called Alfred Matthew. If you sit with him, he can help you to do your financial planning. There's a guy called Alfred Matthew. If you want to invest for your children, this is the guy to see. If you want to start to invest for retirement, this is the guy to see. If you want to get into an interest business, this is the guy to see. It made me very, very visible. Yeah. I no longer struggle to be number one. I must tell you the truth. It is no longer what drives me to work. I never work to become number one anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. I am now working to serve and make sure that my clients are happy. Nazar. They are achieving their goals. Mm -hmm. They are also getting their children to also inculcate the same discipline, Nazar. take it as a culture that financial planning becomes what everyone needs to do. It ought actually to be part of our day to day. Nazar. The moment you're in school, parents should start talking to you about money. The moment you're out of school, parents should continue talking to you about money. The moment you start working, parents as well as your, your management also talk to you about money. So that at the end of the day, you can become good financially. Yeah. 
you can become financially well. But the fact that we've seen financial gospel as a gospel for the rich, it has made the poor people to become poorer. The gap between the rich and poor has continued to widen. Too many retirees are walking to the retirement empty handed. You talk to them about trying to put together funds that will secure their retirement, the thickest worry. They think they are doing it for the benefit of the financial advisor. They are not seeing this as a need. They are seeing it as just it's, it's a luxury. Mm. For them, they don't see it as an important gospel. So what, where, the world from which I'm coming today, I'll tell you what. I'm very, very, very passionate to talk to people of all walks of life, rich and poor, young and old, people that are educated and even not very much educated, to ensure that they embrace this gospel because we all need to be financially well. Today we're here with a captain of an industry which is essentially heavy on education. You see what um, Alfred is telling you is that indeed you need to learn before then you can actually start getting into these products. Now, in the second section that we're going to get into with uh, Mr. Alfred, it's going to be how then the journey has been for him as a CEO now for Kisa and essentially what he wants to achieve, let's say, five years from now, right here on Look Up TV. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiyage. See you on the other side of the break. Welcome back. You are still watching the Captain's Arena. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiyage. Let's then get into the second part of a conversation with uh, Mr. Alfred Madhu. Now, he is a man who spent 24 years in this particular industry. I mean, he's a man who was already saying, I've seen numbers, I've earned as much as I can earn in this particular space. I'm not even, I'm not, I don't even want to be number one in this particular industry in as much as I do know of it. So then, what is left for him to achieve in this particular space? And if, if, if you're going to ask him that question, then you've got to start looking at where we are as an industry. And I'm talking about the insurance industry in the country. So, Mr. Mathu, let, let, let me start from this perspective. You do know very well that um, Kenya has not essentially achieved double penetration figures in this particular industry. I mean, the only time we did see it was during the 2007 post-election violence when every other person wanted to secure their business. What do you think needs to happen for us to have numbers that correspond with the growth of the economy? Uh, thank you very much, Simba. Um, I'll tell you what, I think uh, in my view and uh, of course looking at the experience that I've had in the, in the industry, the missing link is around financial literacy. We need to up the game in terms of getting people upskilled on areas of financial planning. We need to embrace financial planning as part and parcel of our upcoming generations. This is a subject that needs to be taught in schools, whether high schools or universities, or even at the entry level. The children need to understand what is money. How do you make money? How do you manage money? What is the purpose of money? You know, when I was in campus, a lot of the lecturers focused on how can you make wealth. Little did they ever hear them talking about how to manage it. So a lot of people get out of the university with ambitions to make money and to make a lot. They make so much money, misuse most of it, and they retire empty-handed. No one teaches you the skills of managing money so that it can take care of you take care of your children, take care of your grandchildren. A lot of people will talk about the wealth that they had, never about the wealth they have. If you look at the people that would be called rich in our country today, wealthy people in our country today, they are less than 0.5% of the population that is working. So where did you miss it? The moment you understand what you need to be doing your money from day one, you don't have to start putting aside money for investment purposes when you're earning so much. No, it is right at the entry. You're doing 10,000, decide to come up with an investment formula or an, a savings formula. Maybe you want to put aside 10%. Of course, for people that I meet on a day to day basis, the threshold that I commend is 22%. 22.5 to be precise. It's, if you're making 100,000 shillings, assuming that is a net income, that is after tax, 22% of that net income should go into savings and investment. Whether you go into short-term uh, instruments such as the money market that builds an emergency fund, yes, yes. 
or whether you go into a contractual medium to long-term investment that will help you achieve some of the goals such as buying a house, building one, educating your children, you know, it, doing dowry, you know, all those things. Whether that is the agenda or whether the agenda is long term. Long term here we may be looking at succession planning and also looking at retirement investment. Whatever the agenda is, from the day one, when you start making money, you need to have the discipline to start putting aside. Not all money is meant for spending. Some of it is meant for investments and savings. I'm, savings, I'm saying savings because savings are mainly looking at money which is pressed in short-term instruments for emergency purposes. That the idea behind that money is not return. The idea behind that money is security and accessibility. But when you think now uh, beyond the security and accessibility, you now be th looking at building uh, uh, the portfolio. In now long-term instruments or medium-term instruments, which are mainly driven by return also. As you consider your risk appetite, you also look at what return will I be making out of this instrument. So I think for me, it is just to ensure that the level at which people are being upskilled on financial matters needs to be enhanced. We don't need to be taking this as a gospel for the rich. It ought to be gospel for everyone, young, old, rich, poor, retiring, and those that are you know, getting the job market. All of us need to understand that not all money is meant for spending. Some of it is meant for investments and savings. In 2013, I think I took up a very, very senior uh, management responsibility or role in the organization, the Old Mucho. That's when I became the GM of the Old Mucho retail business. And uh, that's a salaried position. So to avoid conflict, you cannot be earning salary and commission at the same time. So the portfolio I had built over the years from 1998 through to 2013, I was advised by the tax experts within the business, within Old Mucho, to move that into an agency, relief my name off from you know, commissions, get the agency to be earning its commissions, so that based on my name, I will not be earning salary. So what I did now, I appointed the principal officer, again, who I allowed to run with the, with the agency. The, the company was incorporated in 2000 and 2000, 2013 with only one staff. That lead has worked with me up to this day. We are now together, is, let's say, how many years? 20, 2013 to this day. Do I say it's about maybe 11, 12 years, something? 11, 12 years. Uh, 11, 12 years. Yes. She's still the principal officer. So over the years now, we continued building. You know, the problem that I went through when I accepted the management uh, responsibility is that you're not allowed to go out there to sell during the working hours because I'm managing others. You are managing other people to avoid conflict. So I used to do my sales on Saturdays, Sundays, late evenings, or very early mornings before going to work. And you know what? Still with all that, with all that I still maintain my position there, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> As the top one advisor in the organization. Just, just three days. Yes. Two days, sorry, in a week. Yes. So but in 20, 2018, I realized that the management responsibilities were now affecting the growth rate of my agency. They just was doing well, but I think we had kind of stagnated. So now jumping out was to be able to give my agency enough attention to grow now beyond the level that had, we had stagnated. And let me tell you what, I think it was the best decision I ever made. It was the best decision. You know, I want, I want to tell you something that you might not be knowing at this particular point. As a tired agent, when, when you are working for a company like, say, Old Mucho, as a tired advisor, Say you worked for 10 years and you committed your commissions to 500,000 per month or a million or whatever amount. If you died, the insurance company is only obligated to pay one more commission. One month of commission. And then after that, everything stops. Okay? It's a big risk, which a lot of sales people don't know. That if you've grown, you've grown your portfolio over the years, you've reached a level you're earning a million, two million, 1.5 million, whatever amount. If you died when you are, yes, if you died when you're still serving as a tied agent, tied means you are specifically or restricted to one company. Say, like I used to do for Old Mucho. Yeah. You're not working for other companies. You're restricted to that particular organization. If you died while serving as a tied agent, the entire portfolio that you've built ceases. And there'll be redistribution of the portfolio to the existing agents. Your family now has nothing to take home. So I thought about that as a big risk. The fact that I had grown my portfolio over the years, it was now paying good money. I thought, this is not the way I want to deal with my future plans. Now, jumping out to become an independent agent, and of course now growing HISA. 
today, assuming, God forbid, Alfred Mathu died, the practice still continues. It has got employees, it has got its assets, it has got its liabilities. The two organizations, both ABSA and Old Mucho, will continue paying commissions even when I'm not there. So some, my children will have something. So Alfred, you started his sign in 2013. So take us back to that particular time when then you said, well, now I want to step out of um, my managerial position. I mean, and they put you there because of the vast amount of experience that you had uh, acquired over the years. 24 is a long time. So could you take us back to that particular time when you told them now I'm leaving? Were there hard feelings when you told them that you were leaving because they were losing somebody who was, um, who was quite experienced in the field? I would say yes and no. Well, start with a no. The no is because of personalities within the business. You know, there always be competition between you and some elements within the, within the business. I wouldn't like to go into that direction for now because we'll be touching on individuals. But there is the bigger section of the people that feel, wow, it's a big loss. How can you allow this guy to jump out? The next minute, he'll be working for other organizations and it is going to impact on our numbers. And that is exactly what happened. But you know what? I love Odmucho too much. The fact that they saw me from my formative stages to the level that I've reached, there's no way I was going to delete the page of Odmucho. I've continued to serve them mm -hmm. as an independent agent mm -hmm. until I was recalled that Alfred, mm -hmm. the management has decided to give you a franchise. Mm -hmm. And the discussions have progressed through the last three years, three and a half years, mm -hmm. until last month when it was actually formalized. Now I've got a franchise business with the old Mucho that whatever I do, will be going through the franchise and they'll continue paying the commissions, they'll continue paying the benefits that they need to pay as per the, 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 the agreements that we signed off you know, in the, within, the, within the franchise. Uh, on the other hand now, uh, uh, Absa Life in my picture. Very, very unique uh, uh, position and opportunity that a lot of clans that I used to live out there mainly because what they were looking for is not what we were providing from the old mutual side. I have now gone back. I told them, guys, you know what? Now I'm no longer a sales agent, I'm a financial advisor. I'm not just pushing you to Old Mucho. If your needs cannot be met by Old Mucho, we'll try to see what ABSA is offering and we position. And I tell you what, that became the turning point. In the years that I had served the Old Mucho, our business is normally assessed based on what we call APE. Yes. APE is what we call the annualized premium. That if today, Simba signed up a plan or a policy for 20,000. The AP of 20,000 is 240. It's the annualized premium of, you know, annualized premium, 240. Before going independent, the highest I ever did was 40 million AP. And that was still the highest in the industry, which up to this date has not been beaten by anyone. And I'm talking about, yes, 40 million in one year. <laughs> up to this day, no one has beaten that number. But you know what? After becoming independent, yeah. the market widened. Does it? The first year, 2018, I jumped from 40 million to 89 million. Oof. I Do doubled my performance in one year. You call yourself the best in <laughs> the country, probably, I don't know the stats in Africa, the, the best the country has ever seen, you say that? The next year, I jumped from 89 million to 95. <laughs> in the year 2021, yeah. I gave Old Mucho alone uh, 110 million. Now, with ABSA in the equation, the mathematics have changed. I've jumped from the 116 million shillings within the calendar year mm -hmm. to giving the combined business, that is what went to ABSA, what went to Old Mucho, came to 171 million. I have never started to think that I could achieve such a number. It has never been anywhere in my dreams because it's a number that has not even been thought about. No one has thought about such a number. Even today you talk to the people, the seasoned advisors in the industry, <laughs> no one is working with such a yeah. target. A lot of them will be working with the 20 million, 25 million, uh, you know, 15 million. Could be the industry best now, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And I'm telling you, this opportunity came in when I accepted to take up that bit of risk to be able to serve my clients better. So it's, it, it's been a tough year because of the aftermath of um, uh, COVID experience. Besides that, of course, you've seen the global uh, uh, recession, as well as our, you know, our national economic challenges that we're, we're going through as a country. Um, that notwithstanding, I'm still looking at growing my numbers, build the 171 million. I have plans, despite challenges, 
to grow my numbers to 200 million. But what am I trying to say in short? I'm only trying to say that I only got better after moving from the tight space mm -hmm. to becoming an independent consultant. Yeah. The market broadened. I became more trusted. I became more referable. I became more credible. That people will not be looking at Alfred Mother who will come and push a product. I no longer push product. You know, the toughest thing to, to, to see in our country is to see people buying rather than you selling. And I would tell you that that's the space that I'm trying to get into, where people will be buying rather than I selling. They'll be queuing like they queue to see doctors. They'll be queuing like they queue to see lawyers. They'll be queuing like they queue to see engineers. Yeah. I want them to also be queuing to come and see me because I am perhaps the industry best. That when you sit with our friend Madhu, he's not going to push a product. He will listen. He will evaluate your needs. Mm -hmm. He will be able to give you the best advice. That's it. You know, the other day I met a gentleman who is my good friend and who is a member of Parkland Sports Club. And he sat and talked about his financial planning. Oh my goodness. The amount of wealth this guy has legitimately acquired and the financial plans around his journey just amazed me. I told him, you know what, my brother, you do not need any of my products. <laughs> well, you own the recommendation. Hold on. Yes. Hold on. Yes. You told him that he doesn't need you. He doesn't need to buy any of my products. Is, is, that, is that something about you to the point that you're not just trying to sell? Yes. Me, I'm not doing hard sales. I'm not trying to push. I want a, people to buy. A, that was a client, right? Yeah. That's for you. And <laughs> this was the first experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> that this gentleman, yeah. after reviewing his portfolio, after looking at the plans that he's got for retirement, yeah. what he's done for his children, he's got three children and they're all abroad. Yeah. I told this guy, you do not need to buy any product from me. <laughs> you? The only thing that I'm recommending to my brother, yes, go and update your will. <laughs> Succession plan. <laughs> that is unheard of from sales agents. Any other agent would A have sales said, advisor yeah. will try to push That's it. a policy to even the president. <laughs> For your own gain, <laughs> rather than the, the president's gain. You, you told know, him you don't need me. You don't need my, my product. The recommendation I'm giving my brother is just to go and update your will. <laughs> just to ensure that the three pillars <laughs> of wealth creation, yes, yes, yes. which are accumulation, mm -hmm. growth and conservation, yes, yes. and distribution, yes. that they are adequately addressed. For him, he has addressed the accumulation aspect. He's got enough. The guy is making a, an annual, I mean, a monthly income of about 15 million Ooh. right now. That's and the guy is 56. Uh, is that not good income? That's good income. Don't forget, he's got three children. They are abroad. One of them is now working as a doctor. The other two are in the university. They are doing their masters. So this guy with about 15 million, just just short of 15 million. Yeah. He's got his own uh, house. Wow. Beautiful. Immaculately yeah. built house yeah. in Lunda. Yeah. He's getting to the face of retirement now. This income is sort of almost guaranteed, the 15 million that, he, that he's making. Now, you ask yourself in that particular space, do you still want to push a product? <laughs> I looked at the, the mechanisms it, of conserving his wealth it, and growing it. it. He's doing it perfectly. He's doing it perfectly. The only thing that I asked him and he didn't seem quite sure is that his uh, 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 will or succession plan is in place and updated. So I told him, my brother, all that I need you to do now, just to ensure that end to end you are sorted financially, go and do a will, meet your lawyer. In fact, we share a lawyer with him. His lawyer is my lawyer. <laughs> it's definitely this is still a member of Parkland Sports Club who happens to be our friend. Yeah. Me, I'm a junior person. He's a senior investor. And we share that lawyer. I told him, go and meet your lawyer. Go, go talk fact, to him. Go do a will. <laughs> you don't need me. We only now need a legally acceptable connection between your wealth That's and it. your children. That when you're not there, because you never know, your children will be able to inherit your wealth with ease without going to court. You see that? that thing, That's all thing. That thing right there. Yeah. Is it, is it what has sort of made people trust you? That is exactly. a clean man. Exactly. He's not, not going to just try to sell me because I got the money. I will actually be extremely concerned if I had somebody talking about me in a negative way that, you know, Alfred did this or Alfred did that. I've tried the best of my ability to ensure that I leave good mark in your life. As a... I will do the business transparently. I will never be involved in cases of misrepresentation. I will never be in cases of fraud. I will never be in cases of shortchanging a customer. I just want to do business in a good way because I know. The moment you're happy, you bring three others who will also make happy. The easiest way to do a business successfully is not by working from 8 through to 10 in the night, no. It's by having a good strategy. My best strategy, my winning strategy has been making my clients work for me. And how do they do it? Whenever they're out there, you become a brand. Hey, have you met this guy from... Oh, I 
Africa. He's Africa, the lead consultant, yeah. Yeah. very active on the lead yeah. team, yeah. called Alfred Mathu, yeah. previously GM with All Mutual, now a consultant with Absa and All Mutual. This guy, if you sit with, down with him, he's going to do a complete deep dive of your financial planning. And whatever that he's going to recommend is going to be the best for you. Pretty much. That is the person I want to be. Yeah. And that's the person I always desire to be. That I want to maintain a good brand name. That when people are out there, they'll be saying, no, 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 don't try that one. Go to Alfred. Go, go to that one. Go to Alfred. Yeah. That guy will ultimately give you the best options. That is the person I've been working towards getting out of myself. Yeah. Pretty Pretty much. So it, it, was kind of bit, it was kind of a bit weird then for me to get into the next question, which I gotta ask, Christo. Or else my my boss is gonna say, why did you ask that question? Anyway, yeah. but just gonna ask it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so for a man who's had quite a long career <laughs> in this field, Alfred, I mean, you've seen it all. To the point now, it's not just about the money for you, it's just about the selling. It is actually impacting the lives of the people that you meet, that you wanna tell about financial literacy and the importance of insurance and all that. What are you gonna be in the next five years? Talk to me about that in respect to Hisa and your consultancy job right now. Uh, good question. Let me first of all tell you of my greatest concern at the moment. Yeah. When I go through the Kenyan statistics as far as financial planning is concerned, we've got approximately 70% of the current investors are women. And only 30% are men. That 70% of the current investors are women? Yeah. And 30% are men? Yes. Did you know what, Simba? Today, if you're married, you walk to a bank with your wife, perhaps trying to take up a facility, and assuming that you're earning double of your wife's income, do you know chances are high that your wife is going to get the facility before you? Oh, yeah? Women tend to be more credible. They tend to be more responsible. Yeah. They tend to be, you know, the emotional aspect of wanting to win, wanting to succeed, and wanting the kids to do the same has actually driven them to the level that they are. Let me tell you what that, that has done. It is slowly bringing in a revolution. Whether national revolution or global, but a revolution is coming. Men have been called to be the leaders of families. You cannot just be a leader because you are a man. You cannot just be a leader because you are in trousers. You need to meet some certain expectations and responsibilities. You cannot just be a man who lives in a house that has been bought by a lady. You cannot just be a man who drives a car that is owned by a lady? You cannot just be a man who has children and who you've never paid school fees for. You cannot just be, be, be a man who is never concerned about the welfare of your family or children. That is where the men are. Yeah. Men are spending, whether spending on the right things or the wrong things, that's another subject. But women are saving and they are investing. At the point you get the finish line, call it the retirement, the woman the woman is way wealthier than the man that your credibility is questioned from i mean from the onset from the both retired you cannot be able to meet the financial obligations of that family but your wife is able to you try to surprise your wife with a brand new car say you bring her prado you want to surprise her during her birthday she's telling me if only you had told me i would actually have topped up this amount to buy a Range Rover. <laughs> <laughs> You see where the world is going. <laughs> Men are coming up with plans of which schools are taking their kids. That's it. And the wife is coming up with a totally different plan. Completely different plan. I want to give my children the best. That's it. You are just looking for mid-level school. <laughs> Your wife is looking for an international school and she's willing to pay. You see what I mean? <laughs> I want to challenge the men. Even as we go through this subject, yeah. I want to challenge the men. Yeah. It is now about time to change the narrative. Let us now start becoming financially responsible. That's it. A lot of men think that the financial gospel is meant for others, not themselves. And that is where the women have taken it all. You meet 10 men, 10 women, talk to them about financial planning. Chances are high that later after the, the, the engagement, five to 10 ladies might come back to you. What do I need to do to be able to get to that level? You had to get two men coming back. The know it all attitude is killing the men. The spreading appetite is killing the men. Yeah. The love for immediate gratification, the love for spending money on wants rather than needs, yes, yeah, is kidding yeah. the men. Mm -hmm. And even now, even in the, the place where you work, just go and look at how many of the ladies are investing versus men. You'll be very, very surprised. You'll be ignoring a lady because she just looks simple. 
not knowing that that lady is wealthier than you in terms of savings, in terms of uh, investments. So I am charging the men at the same time. But look at what you're talking, talking to me about. I think I want to make myself and Hisa to be a household name. That when it's, about, when it's about individual or corporate investment or financial planning, you'll not think about anything else other than, old, uh, other than Alfred Matthew or Hisa. Today, when you think about uh, buying a new, a new uh, line for your mobile, what comes through first? Is it Safaricom or is it Airtel? It's Safaricom. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. If you're a businessman and you think of opening a bank account, yeah. you don't have to name the bank, but it's a bank that immediately it comes, comes to your mind. Bank, yeah, it's a bank that immediately comes to your yeah, mind. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a business person mm -hmm. and you're thinking of opening a business account, there's a bank that will come to your mind. That is where I want to be. That any time people are thinking about financial planning, any time people are thinking about how can I structure my investments to address retirement investment, I want them to see Alfred Mazu and Hisa. Me and my company are going to be synonymous. The way Michael Joseph was synonymous some years back with Safaricom. When you had Michael Joseph, yes. what came to my mind was Safaricom. Safaricom. When you had Safaricom, what used to come to your mind was? It's Michael Joseph. It's just, okay. That's yeah. what I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That when you hear financial planning, you hear Hisa Africa. And Alfred Mazu on this other side. He's Africa and Alfred Mazu to be synonymous. And the idea is about planning. What, what would you like your kids to know, Mathu? If, if there's one thing that you wish for them to know, I mean, your story looks told. You, you, you're a man with responsibility, first born in a family. Responsibility started even when you were in school. The community is now looking at you, has always looked at you, you know. I, I, I know the background. In 1990s, you know, going to university was a privilege. Just a couple of people who managed to do that. What would you like your kids to know? Is there one thing that today would make you proud? I like, oh, my kids know that. <laughs> you know what, the other day, I sat with, uh, I've got two sons yeah. and a number of daughters. But I want to especially focus on uh, my, son, my two sons. And my second born son just got married the other day and now has been blessed with a baby boy. Yeah. The baby now is about three months. And um, I picked a conversation with my son and my daughter-in-law. I called them for a cup of tea and we were discussing and I told them, you know what guys? Faith, you are not married the other day. Now you are married. You are a mother. You are a wife. Then still, you are not married the other day. Now you are married. You are a father. You have already been blessed with a son. The financial journey of your son has already begun and it's three months. Whatever that you are doing with your money today as faith and denzel will inform the kind of life that your son will have 10, 15, 20 years from now. The kind of school that you're going to take your son, the kind of university you're going to take your son, the kind of degree that you're going to put your son through will be dependent on what you're doing with your money today. I told you it was going to be a bank of financial advisory and financial advice sitting right here on the Cartes Arena. Today, we were speaking with one, Mr. Alfred Madhu. By the way, just go right now online, Google, HISA, all right, Insurance Africa. Then after that, look at exactly what is they're doing. In fact, it's a shame that 70% of women are investing and there's only 30% out of the 100 who are essentially investing. It's, it's not really that good. And from what he said, the excuses got to stop. All right? Stop shortchanging your kids and your future and, and your households. He's saying there's a plan. It's got to be there. Miss Alfred, thank you very much for coming by. Thank you so much, Simba. Any other time, man. Fantastic. By the way, we were or still will be at the Tamarind Hotel. They're just right here at Ngongre. But this coffee is really good. Come here and have a taste. All right. Ikosawa sana. All right. All right. Now, that is exactly what it is that we had for you today on the Captain's Arena. We're going to see you next week for another edition or speak to another captain. But for today, it's a good night and goodbye.